Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Now, as I pointed out at the end of the video last time, this is going to be video number 200. So, you've got 200 videos now to pick from here on the DCC Guy channel, ranging anywhere from pure DCC subjects to how to build a module and work here on the Piedmont Southern. And we're just going past 18,000 subscribers. So, we have two things to celebrate here coming up on the 4th of July weekend. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is this video is going to be in two parts, really. The first section of the video is going to deal with Thai River, a little bit about the history of it, the operations, why I chose it uh, for the Piedmont Southern layout. Then we'll take a look at the track plan and see how it fits into the Piedmont Southern operations and how it's actually going to be operated because it's a little bit different, as you'll see later here in the video. Then we're going to go ahead and begin uh, by installing part of the backdrop here on the, uh, on the layout. Now this is a, a, one of those tricky little installations because uh, right here we have an outside curve in the wall. So that means I've got to take the backdrop around this very sharp 90 degree curve here uh, in the wall. And that means I've got my Windex ready at hand in order to be able to saturate the hardboard that I'm going to be using for the backdrop so that I can uh, get that tight bend around that uh, outside 90 degree corner there. And uh, I showed you how to do this in a previous video uh, on adding a backdrop, a curved backdrop to the modules. And now I'm going to be using it again here on the Piedmont Southern itself. So I realize that some of you may not be interested in the introduction to Thai River and the history of it and how it operated and uh, how it's going to be operated here uh, on the layout. So what I will do is I will put a timestamp somewhere around me right in here so that you guys that uh, want to can just jump ahead to that section where we're going to start working on installing the backdrop here on the, uh, the layout. Now, in the next video after this, and I'll give you a heads up about it, this is going to be a two-part uh, backdrop here. So I've got about oh, 15, 16 feet to cover here. So today we'll go ahead and get this first section installed with the curve in it. And then the second section will be down at the far end of the layout there, where I still have to add a small section of bench work, about one foot by two foot, to finish off a gap in there between the end of this bench work and the wall itself where the, uh, where the uh, track will disappear into a tunnel. And uh, go behind this area here uh, into a utility room where I'm building a helix to take it up here to the second level. So before next week, I will have that little addition uh, installed and we'll do the second uh, piece of the backdrop and begin the process of uh, using drywall techniques to spackle all of the screw holes, get that sanded down and ready to go. And if we have time at that point, we will start transferring the track plan uh, to, the, uh, to the green foam and uh, get started with uh, laying track later on. So let's go ahead and get started with taking a look at the background on Thai River, what it was, and uh, why I included it as part of the Piedmont Southern layout. Okay, let's start with a, uh, a website, the Whippany Railway Museum.net. So they have an excellent uh, webpage on the Virginia Blue Ridge Railway. So why did Whippany end up with an interest in the Virginia Blue Ridge? Well, they ended up with some of the locomotives uh, when the railroad shut down. So you can read more about that if you go to the Whippany Railway Museum.net, and there's a whole section here, about seven pages on the Virginia Blue Ridge. And um, this railway was about 16 miles in length, and it ran from its connection at Ty River with the Southern Railway back up into the Blue Ridge Mountains in uh, western 
uh, Nelson County, Virginia. And uh, originally, the purpose of the railroad was for logging and to bring out, you know, large chestnut logs, that type of thing. And it ran uh, quite productively doing that for about 30 years until the, um, the, the chestnut blight wiped out the chestnut trees in the area. And so that kind of wiped out the, the best part of their business. Fortunately for them, um, a lot of other things uh, came along. One of the, some of the other things that they produced were uh, apples. A lot of orchards uh, were, were located up in there. So they were shipping out uh, various orchard products. A lot of it was in the form of, of apples. And uh, so they received orchard supplies, fertilizer, feed, all that kind of stuff. And um, they were also receiving various other inbound traffic as well. But uh, the big thing that, that came about in the 1930s, uh, starting around 1931, um, the Southern Mineral Products Company uh, opened up a mine uh, to extract uh, ilmenite ore, which was a source of titanium dioxide. So uh, they were shipping out a lot of titanium dioxide uh, to the Thai River uh, interchange point. And that was a big part of their production. Later on, uh, there were other uh, facilities that came online and they were, uh, 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 they found another mineral called apolite, which uh, was great for making glass. So they were producing both this uh, titanium dioxide uh, ore and also uh, extracting it there. And then they were also shipping out the uh, apolite material uh, for uh, things of that for for use in glass production. So there was quite a bit of, of, of work going on up in there in the uh, Piney River area. And this this uh, website does a great job covering all of these kind of things that um, that were being extracted in this area. So the great thing for a, for a model railroader is that this was a great source of interchange traffic because you've got um, train loads of ore coming out. You've got uh, train loads of, of apple products coming out and various other uh, products that they were producing up, up in that area. And uh, then they were shipping empty uh, covered hoppers in and hoppers in to bring out all of this ore and products. And they were also um, taking in occasional uh, hopper loads of coal and uh, tank cars of oil or fuel, and all of these kind of things uh, that went in uh, to the uh, Piney River community. So they make a great industry without being uh, something you have to model. What I wanted to include was the interchange tracks at Ty River because they would have brought in whole strings of cars, left it parked there behind the, uh, the depot at Ty, at, uh, Ty River, and then the southern train would come along and drop off the empties and pick up the loads and head on uh, to their destination. So that makes a great way to model quite a bit of traffic uh, flow without actually having all of these industries uh, located on the actual model railroad. So if you go to their website, they've got a lot of information on the history of the various locomotives used by the railroad. So one of the things that they had was a lot of these uh, uh, several of these anyway, large 060 uh, locomotives that uh, they used. They also had this, I believe it's an X, yeah, it's an X Southern Railway uh, 280 consolidation that uh, was uh, used there for a number of years. I believe this one is preserved either at, yeah, I think it's at the Morris County Railroad in uh, New Jersey. Enough about that part of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the actual track plan now. Now I use uh, CAD rail to lay out my track plans and um, it allows me to print these out and uh, calculate actual dimensions for all of these uh, tracks and uh, makes it very easy when it comes to transferring a track plan onto the layout. At any rate, so this is the area uh, right in through here where I, uh, where I am uh, installing the backdrop. So it goes from right about here to right about through this area right here. 
And uh, what we have is the Blue Ridge, Virginia Blue Ridge uh, interchange located here on the back, and then our passenger and freight depots. Uh, a passing siding here that services those depots. And then the north and the southbound main lines go through here. And on the outside of those, I have a cannery because this was a, a very important area for apple production. It still is in central Virginia. And there's still a number of, uh, of, of apple processing facilities in the area, as well as uh, uh, shipping locations, things of that nature, and storage uh, warehouses. So I, uh, I decided to put in a cannery here, even though there wasn't one there, and uh, also a pulpwood loading uh, set up here. So we'll have a pulp wood yard located right here for loading uh, the uh, pulp racks. And we'll also have uh, pulp racks coming down the, uh, uh, the Virginia Blue Ridge interchange as well. So uh, we'll be able to pick up quite a bit of freight here as well as up here at the pulpwood loading facility at Ty River and the cannery. So uh, we've got an empties in operation primarily here, although they'll, they will be bringing in a certain number of you know, canning supplies, that type of thing for the cannery. So this will be um, uh, served out of Monroe Yard. We'll have a local that will come out here and will uh, take care of traffic here at uh, the uh, interchange tracks and also uh, the cannery and the pulpwood as well as the freight depot. So a number of things that uh, can go on here. Um, you'll note here this track, this was the uh, access or the Virginia Blue Ridge uh, Railway line that ran up uh, to uh, Piney River. And uh, so they, they would come in through here and bring in their loads and they could uh, go ahead and pick up empties and head out again. So uh, what we will see then is the um, local will come in, uh, pull over here on the siding. Uh, he can do a run around, grab the, uh, the, this end of the train, pull it back and shove his uh, cars in here on one of these tracks and couple up to the others and pull them out and bring them out here. So it allows us to just literally shove maybe 10, I think I've got room, for 10 or 11 cars here on these two interchange tracks. So uh, we'll be able to bring in uh, quite a number of cars in here and drop them off. We'll also have cars that we will have picked up in uh, Amherst, which is the next town right down through here. And then uh, we'll also have a few cars to switch in here on the cannery and on the pulpwood uh, loading. With that introduction, let's go ahead and move on and we'll go ahead and take a look at installing the backdrop here uh, in this section because it has to take a curve around this 90 degree corner right here. So we're going to be bringing that uh, uh, 1 8 inch hardboard uh, material straight on down through here and then bend it around and make it come this way. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can go about doing that. Okay, so this is a close up look then at the area between the two levels. Now, um, between the upper level and the lower level, uh, track to track basically, uh, it's 14 inches down at that end and it transitions to 15 inches over here. So we've got about uh, 15, 14 and a half inches right in here. The reason it slopes down is we're going to be going into a helix down at the far left here. And uh, so I wanted to reduce the elevation a bit as we come through this area and move around to the back of the, uh, the area behind this wall here where the helix is located so that I can uh, limit the number of turns that I have in the helix. And that's going to result in less time to go up and down the helix for my operators. So what I've done then is, you can see, I use these uh, steel brackets like this one right here to uh, hold up and support the upper level of the layout. And one problem with that is you can see it's, it's tapered here. And when it's against uh, the um, supports uh, for the upper level, uh, that means that I have to make a cutout in the backdrop. And I'll show you those in a second in order for them to fit around that. So 
if you look in here, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, you can see uh, spots where I've had to uh, go ahead and cut holes in the top of the backdrop so it will fit over uh, that uh, metal um, support there. So what I've done then is I've already uh, clamped uh, the uh, backdrop at its far end to one of the uprights. And then at other locations where you can see here, I've gone ahead and um, right here and right here, I just took uh, small rectangles of masonite and uh, ran a screw through them and attached uh, the backdrop temporarily to the uprights. Now eventually I will countersink the backdrop itself and install those drywall screws in it so that you know we can use the joint compound later to cover up the uh, heads of those. And that's what I've done here all through the whole layout for my backdrop. So those are just temporary uh, uh, supports to hold the backdrop in place while I go about the process of taking uh, the backdrop around this curve right here. So what I'm going to do now is, I just put this up to show you that, and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to remove the screws and the clamps that are holding the backdrop in place, turn it uh, on its side here, and then I'm going to saturate it with the Windex uh, so we can bend it to go around this curve. So I'm going to go ahead and get my drill, and we'll start popping those out of there. Uh, pretty straightforward, like that. And I need to do this one right in here. I'm going to pull the camera back so you can see what I'm doing better here. Um, there. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and drop the uh, backdrop down now. Get it released at both ends here and not damage any of the wiring from above. I need to transfer my marks. Let's see. It's right here and right there. So that's the area that I'm going to be saturating with Windexes from here to here on the uh, piece of backboard. So you want to get this in really good and heavy so it can saturate that entire area there, particularly right here in the center. Okay, that should be enough. Let it soak for a minute here. Now one thing I'll point out, one thing I did, uh, in order to protect the wall and also to give it a, a better bend here, I went ahead and just took a piece of foam, half inch insulation foam left over from cutting the benchmark out, and I just put that in here. So that's going to be there to go around and protect both the wall itself and also protect the bend here so that we're not going to get too sharp of a bend. Okay, so I'm going to just let that sit there for a few minutes and saturate. Okay, so that's pretty well saturated now and, and soaked in quite a bit, and I can get a pretty good bend in it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to flip it back up into position uh, against the wall and uh, reapply the clamps and those uh, screws with the uh, hardboard, and then I can do the bend. So let's go ahead and get started with that part. I'll go ahead and we will uh, place this back in place here. There we go. There's the first one. So I'll put that in there. So those two screws are going to hold the backdrop in place while I do this bend here. So let's move in close and take a look at the bending process here. Okay, so I'm bringing it on around. And at this point, I have another upright against the wall here. And I am just bending this to that tight radius. And we'll get it in here. And again, I have two more of these rectangles and my screwdriver. So what I'm going to do is 
push this into place firm as I can and hold it there while I apply these screws. Okay, so here's one right here to go in. And let's see if I can't get that to bite. There's one. And we'll take another one and get it inserted. Okay. Okay, there. Now, those two screws are gonna hold that firmly in place while that backdrop goes ahead and takes that curve. And once that has dried, that's gonna be a permanent bend there. It's going to stay in that position even when I remove those screws. And uh, once that's done, then I have to take all of those screws and clamps off, take the backdrop outside and cut it to fit uh, at that upright uh, on the far right hand end that I, where I just uh, installed those uh, two. Okay, so that's all I've got to do for today. Um, the main thing that uh, I wanted to do is get started on this curved section of the backdrop and, and get that set up. And uh, so we've accomplished that. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. We've got a pretty good introduction to the Thai River uh, area, how it operated, what it did, and and all of that and why I included it here on the Piedmont Southern. Uh, also, I made a, a major step in getting the first part of this backdrop installed. I've been putting this off for quite a while simply because I have to wrap it around there. And in, in the end, it's, it's a fairly quick and easy thing to do once you get everything set up and ready to go. So, you know, give that some thought in your preparation for your model railroad, whether it's a single deck or a double deck like mine here, because, you know, do give some thought in advance, because if I had gone ahead and laid a subroad bed and track and all of that here, it would have made it a lot more difficult to install this hardboard that forms the backdrop. So by, uh, by going ahead and getting the backdrop installed first before I started doing anything with the track work makes it a lot easier in the long run. The next part of, the, uh, of this project will be uh, tackling the rest of the, of the backdrop down at that eight foot end of the layout. So that has to go all the way down and then it's gonna wrap out just a little bit at the end uh, so that we, we're gonna hide that entrance uh, to the tunnel of where it goes through the wall. And um, after that, we'll start uh, transferring the track plan to the green foam just like I showed you for the modules. So we're taking what I did on the modules and applying it here on a full-size layout. So for those of you here in the U.S., have a great and safe 4th of July weekend. Enjoy the fireworks and the hot dogs, hamburgers, barbecue, whatever it is you're doing up special this weekend. And for those of you around the world, you know, have a great weekend too. So take it easy, be safe, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.